Margaret, thank you so much for joining us on The Right Note and welcome to Australia. Thank you so much. It's literally been four hours since your plane <laughs> from New York arrived. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a little loopy because it's I'm I'm experiencing a little bit of jet lag right now. But I bet. it just started hitting maybe 30 minutes ago. <laughs> right, right. Well, you came to the right place. I'm yes. so glad this was your first stop. <laughs> so Me you've, too. you've got um, well, you've got an Australian tour about to start, and they've had to add an extra show in Sydney due mm -hmm. to popular demand. Did you know that there was that kind of interest or, or support down here for you? Um, I I I couldn't really grasp it. Um, I think I've known that. Triple J has been our friend and mm -hmm. been really generous to us and have been playing the music a lot. So I, I knew that that was helping out. Um, but it was a total surprise. It was right. really, really cool and made us even more excited to be coming over. So, nice. yeah, it's much appreciated. Cool. So with the album Emotions and Math, like if you think back to when you first started writing the songs that would end up on the record, mm -hmm. what in your wildest dreams were you hoping for them? Because at the time you didn't have a record deal. Um, and I think there was a version of the album which you actually recorded in your apartment. Mm -hmm. Where would you have hoped that these songs would have ended up? I think I kind of just hoped that they would do exactly what they're doing now. I mean, I think that really my biggest, uh, the biggest dreams and aspirations for all of it was just to actually make a record mm -hmm. and release it. <laughs> right. That was like to the total success for me. Everything else has kind of just been icing on the cake, but um, for me that it's been such a long time coming mm. for me to kind of make the music sound exactly like I would like it to sound. It's always been a little bit of an uphill battle in terms of having the right space to make the record in, having the resources that I needed. Um, so it was always the first time I made it, I made it on an iPad. Mm. The second time I made it, I made it with like a, a proper interface and preamp and some mics and my computer. And then by the time I had finished the album that way, um, the record label I'm on now, ATO Records, called and said, you want to make a record? <laughs> so I made the record again. Um, and it just felt like such a, a success to essentially just complete it, to be honest. That, that's the big kind of dream come true yeah. in the whole story, for sure. Mm -hmm. So in terms of signing with ATO Records mm -hmm. and re-recording the album and... and doing it in the proper studio and then releasing it with the backing of a proper label. What, what's the most surprising thing about this whole journey that, that's happened to you since then? Um, I mean, I think that the touring is definitely, uh, while I knew that I would do it, I also kind of didn't know that I was going to do it. There's, It always seemed like a given musician's tour and that's what you do. And so I knew that that was going to happen in making a record and having to promote it. Um, but then the actual act of touring sometimes, I think in learning how to do it and, and my own style of doing it, sometimes it, that can be very surprising. Um, you just find yourself in situations, uh, you know, where at times I wouldn't have been home for long periods of time. And then you just kind of look around and go, where, what am I doing? <laughs> there was one time that I, um, there was one time where I remember I was in my car or we, I always, you know, rent cars wherever we fly to, and then we'd go on tour, and we had rented a van, and I was there in my van, and um, a light came on, so I wanted to make sure that the van was okay, so I called the rental company, and then I, uh, she said, yeah, we can help you, you just have to let me know where you are, and I just sat there, <laughs> just blank, <laughs> and I didn't know where I was. <laughs> And it took me a good while to understand where I was. I had to go through my contract papers, look at where I'd rented the car from, but it's been a week or two into tour, so I'm not close to that place anymore. <laughs> I'm looking around to the license plates at my... And then the woman was genuinely concerned for my health, I think. She said, ma'am, are you okay? Do you know where you are? And I said, yeah, just give me a minute. And then I figured it out. But um, yeah, that was weird. Right, <laughs> so right. So situations like that, I think it's mostly, it's not, to me, honestly, the performing in, you know, that part and playing music is very natural. Mm. And some of the other stuff isn't always because you're in just situations you would never be in unless yeah. you're on tour, for sure. So that's th that those can be funny and weird. <laughs> yeah. And I understand L Elliot Smith's music was quite a big influence on this yeah. album. What, what is it about his music that you love? Gosh, um, there's a lot of things about Elliot Smith that I'm, I'm very into. I think uh, the production of the records is really cool. Um, I've definitely taken cues from uh, the production of a lot of his records. The 
the chord changes and the kind of uh, the harmony that he uses, I, I'm really drawn to. Um, and I think it taught me to kind of follow my nose and really choose the chords I was playing rather than just, you know, take it as a given to play the things I already knew. I think there's a lot of nuance to what people actually hear inside their minds. It's really hard to pry that out and actually play it. Mm -hmm. um, so it took me a lot of time to try and cultivate that, and I'm still trying to cultivate that, obviously. Um, but I think that he really succeeded in having a unique voice in that sense. So I look up to him for that. And then just the lyrical content, I think that he was, um, he really said some things that I think a few people say in the songs that they write and made me feel a lot more at home with myself as a young person and um, got me really inspired to write songs that do the same. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's been well documented that you started very young musically playing the fiddle. Mm -hmm. But what, what was it that then drew you to guitar? Like, was there was there a guitar? Did you have any idols growing up that sort of made you gravitate towards that instrument? Yeah, mostly like my brother, my dad. Um, those were two people that were very excited about the guitar and kept a lot of guitars in the house. Mm -hmm. And my mom and sister both played too. Um, so at a young age, those were like, you know, who I really looked up to as my family because they... Um, they made it to be such a given that people just play guitar. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to be a professional. You just, that's what you do. You just play it. And like every, I remember too, my, my dad kind of saying like every good house has a guitar in it. Right. That, that's just like a thing, <laughs> you know, whether you play or not, you just have a guitar to kind of strum around and do your thing on. So um, that was definitely the kind of starting point. And then a lot of songwriters I look up to, um, Elliot Smith is a guitar player I look up to quite a bit. Joni Mitchell, I mm -hmm. love her rhythm playing and the chord choices and the tunings. Um, I'm a big Jimi Hendrix fan. Nels Klein, I'm a big fan of. Mark Ribot, I'm a big fan of. Julian Lodge, I'm a big fan of. Right, lots of inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you actually worked at a guitar shop in New York, is that right? For yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. Was that your last job before you? Yeah, that was actually. That right. was my last kind of proper job before I've... Um, before I took this proper job. Um, <laughs> Do you but, remember that last day? Yeah, totally. I, that was an awesome job. I really love it there. Um, T.R. Crandall is the name of that store, my favorite guitar shop in New York City, very special spot. Uh, and it was just really wonderful because a lot of a lot of your idols would walk in. It's in New York City. It's down in Alphabet City. It's, it's kind of a spot, you know. So sometimes people would walk in and you kind of... Uh, gasp yeah, like who? <laughs> oh I mean just you know some some friends of mine too that it's just amazing to be around because they're that's a spot like Nels always hangs at T.R. Crandall um Bill Frizzell hangs at T.R. Crandall uh just just a really wonderful community that um I feel lucky to be a part of and have you had any time amongst all this touring to start thinking about album number two yeah, I've been I've been doing it. I haven't really had time, but I mm. still have to do it. So, <laughs> so I've been pecking away. <laughs> right. um, yeah, I've been riding on the road a little bit and just kind of piece by piece putting it together. Um, and I'm going to have a little more time off this year to, to kind of dedicate myself to that. Right. Um, I'm really excited to get back at it. Yeah, nice. Well, mm -hmm. until then, you've got this Australian tour to do. Yes, I'm so, so excited to be here. Yeah, well, thank you very much once again for coming in and, yeah. and good luck with everything. Thanks for having me.